her with her friends. And really, um, it's so important, I think, for young people to be involved and, and know that they have purpose. And, you know, it's not only for those who can benefit from your help, but I've had students in here who, you know, have, have helped others on Rutgers campus or, you know, Eric Legrand, and I've had some of his peers here, a Rutgers University football player, you know, who um, the community rallied around when he was injured. You know, it's nothing like seeing and hearing from your peers. So, you know, we would love to have all ages uh, there joining us. I wanted to to talk a little bit before we go and just sort of get the tempo of if you heard us uh, a little bit earlier as we talk about a wonderful event coming up on April 2nd and 3rd, um, Embrace the Kids Dance-a-Thon at Rutgers uh, Gym here in New Brunswick. We're talking about the backdrop, really, of, of real-life families going through challenges and those who help them. But there's a larger perspective out there. And, and Lori, I'd love to know your thoughts as we talk about health care, as we talk about solutions to what do we do. You explained to us that easily Jackie's health care bills were approaching the million dollar mark and that's really and they probably may have stopped there only because she became a survivor and was doing well at some point yes you and know it, it, this could just go on and on and it, and it has because she will have to be followed for the rest of her life PET scans you know MRIs CAT scans x-rays um, you know she has a, a rod in her leg that is I don't know maybe sixty or seventy thousand dollars when she lost her femur due to the cancer, they replaced it with a titanium rod. That surgery alone was over 100. Mm-hmm. It's, it's an exorbitant amount of money. Have you thought as you go along and as the family continues to gain strength from this because it's been such an ordeal, what would you like to see come out of our local or state governments in terms of health care legislation? Or you know, just what are your views as a person who has had to leave their job to make sure your family is cared for along with the support of your other family members. We don't think this is going to happen to us this way. And even if we have insurance, as I said earlier, depending upon what insurance you have, it may or may not cover certain things. It gets really tricky when you have a major illness and a rare illness. That's correct. What What do you think now when you sort of listen? I bet it's a whole different thought process now when you're either listening to legislators or you're thinking about health care reform, what are your thoughts about the tenor of what's going on? Because that's directly what's happening in Washington right now. Well, unless the federal government decides to allocate more money to pediatric cancer research, the cost will keep going up because there, there, is, no, there is no cure. Right. Our children are being treated with drugs from the 1950s and 60s. Pediatric cancer only gets, I think it's a little under 3%, of funding from mm. the federal government. Um, so the voices, sort of the smallest, youngest voices, they do not, not get heard. heard. You're they saying absolutely it's not, do it's not, not get heard. They're not getting heard. They do not get heard. And if it wasn't for private foundations um, footing the bill, I'm not quite sure what would happen to a lot of these families. And until the federal government wakes up and pays attention that more and more children are being diagnosed every day with pediatric cancer, and that now we're starting to see children being diagnosed not with just one type of cancer at a time, but two types of cancer. Wow. And what also happens is once you've been treated for one type of cancer, you have to be followed for the rest of your life because the likelihood of developing a secondary cancer is increased. Well, and how about the fact that that once you are diagnosed and treated and, and praise the Lord, you're a survivor, try getting insurance. You know, try, I dread try, that for try, as, try as an adult going out and saying, you know, because we assume, you know, insurance is, is, is the least, you know, costly for younger people because they're not likely to go. It's, you know, all of the things that we, they look at when they go over and say, okay, somebody 25 is going to get a cold maybe, but not this. When you've already had an illness that, that has costs in the stratosphere, imagine now we've got to cover, make sure you're covered from your 20s and beyond after, you know, I think it's 26 or 27. I think my son would be covered until as long as he's in school, so forth and so on. Right. But, okay, what happens after that? Exactly, what happens? What happens? You know, so, I mean, these are serious, serious issues. And it's it's interesting because I think that we're more cued into them clearly 
when we're experiencing that. You know, of course, it's, you know, with my dad, it's Medicare and Medicaid. So he's always listening to, you know, what's going on on C-SPAN or what have you, because now you're living that life. But because we don't expect our children to become so ill, that's more of a rare you know, condition. When this happens, the costs are off the chart. They're off the chart. And I know that in the next coming weeks, there's a group of um, oncology parents that are going to be going to Washington, D.C. through Cure Search to petition the government and to try to tap them on the shoulder and say, hey, wake up. If you don't start taking care of these kids and providing more funding for research, the costs are just going to continue to grow and we're going to continue to lose young, precious lives. But that's so serious. This is so this is serious. And I think that, you know, this is a great forum because and I'm actually, you know, tweeting while we sit here. This is a great forum because this is this allows us to have our voices be heard. One thing I don't think I'll ever understand. You and know, I, I know a lot of people would pro- there may be some people out there that disagree that we can now make computers as thin as postage stamps, <laughs> oh, but we man. can't cure our children. Mm. And that just doesn't sit well with me. And it's a horrible, horrible disease. And oftentimes uh, the oncologist will say to you, well, we're hoping for this and we're hoping for that. But the truth is nobody really knows. That's why you need government and philanthropy both right. working toward a cure because That's right. the cures in themselves are not profitable, unlike you know, mm. an iPod or other great items today that we all enjoy. There's great, There's profit in those. But pediatric diseases, that is not profitable for a pharmaceutical company. So that is why the drugs are from decades ago. And you need government and philanthropy as partners to move things forward. Well, Glenn, maybe next time the founder of Facebook decides to give away uh, bag loads of money, he'll designate some of that to pediatric cancer research. I would hope so. Well, you know, I mean, really... It's interesting. I'm not sure if there's a, a an arm of sort of, as you said, you know, sort of moms who can get together and say, OK, these you know, these are the things it would be great to have, you know, hear testimony uh, in Washington to hear your story. To me, that's really what this allows us to do is to, to get that out there and have your voice be heard um, and to say, you know, we, we, we need help. I don't think people realize when they think about pediatric disease and bone cancers or blood bloodborne illnesses that they really have thought about you know um, the the small amount of resources when it comes to research funding and medications sometimes we just don't know so you know we need to to educate ourselves in the public um, and and I would say you know ask those who have you know the deep pockets you said you know I wonder uh, who who out there you know can help us I, I think it's a great thing what the founder of Facebook did to help the city so but you know people have different things in their head when they say okay how do I want to spend this money and some people anonymously spend money in ways you can never imagine sure. but you've got to educate them and say right. you know what how many people know my story most and I don't think that most people realize that pediatric cancer research is so underfunded and so o- overlooked. Well, and because you're saying cancer research, we're assuming that cancer is the heavyweight out there if it's not heart disease. So we're going to see a lot of money go to cancer research. I always say it's really interesting. I've done, you know, walk for the cure, race for the cure. I've done, you know, I've done so many different things. And it's interesting because there's a there's a big division out there in terms of what groups are seeking what money. So they could be cancer based organizations, nonprofits, but they're not the same group. No, they're not. Right. Right. Yeah. And also today we really focused on pediatric cancer, uh, but Embrace Kids supports uh, blood disorders as well. Right. And so then when you start talking about sickle cell and that, how that piqued gross, my interest when you oh said my gosh, that, you know, if we think pediatric cancer. Um, research is not funded well. Sickle cell disease is so underfunded. It I don't is even gross. know if, it, if many people even still, for a while, we used to hear about sickle cell, you know, years ago. I haven't heard that much about it in, and I would say, 10, 15 Very, very painful. frustrating. And you have to understand, cancer is a crisis, and it usually comes to a conclusion in a couple of years. Kids that have sickle cell, that is a lifelong chronic um, disorder. Painful, painful, very painful. They're in our program till let's say about age 22. 
then it is so hard for them to transition to an Affects adult African-Americans life. African Americans, primarily, 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 really of Mediterranean, right? Um, African American descent, descent. But it's so hard for the adults. Um, you know, they become an adult yes. patient. It's a completely different world. Very hard time keeping a job. One of the things Embrace Kids started doing was trying to find employers that would be flexible with young adults that have sickle cell and oh, place that's them. Interesting. Yeah, that's and we've a great done, thing. We've done some great things with that. So really, I mean, you're trying to make people's lives work. It's not, you yeah. know, it, and there's many ways yeah. to do this. So we know that to me, you know, we, you know, money is, is, is key. Resources are key. But then again, there's a lot of ways to use resources. Sure. There's not just one way to do that's it. Right. So, you know, really to have and grow a community when you think about it, when you have, even